Hello, this is uh, author J. Lloyd Morgan, also known as Jason Morgan, Professor Morgan, depending on who how you know me as. And uh, I'm recording this on March 21st, 2020. We are in the, hopefully, the not too beginning stages of the uh, coronavirus or the COVID-19 crisis. And I just wanted to record some videos for posterity and uh, kind of like journalize what's kind of going on as far as, uh, you know, how it's affected me. This is mainly for me. <laughs> if anyone else wants to watch this, great. But this is kind of just a snapshot of what's going on. So as of right now, um, I work full-time at a university. i got to be some vague about things because I'm not sure what I can share and what I can't share. Um, and uh, I'm a department head there. We have elected uh, the school is now going to all online classes. Uh, and so I have to oversee the faculty and help them get up to speed as moving all their classes from um, teaching them face-to-face -face and online. So as of right now, that decision was made, and those that hasn't started yet. So um, there's a lot of unknowns as far as how well that's going to work. Um, the policy that the school has decided to do is that we'll be holding classes at the regular time and using uh, Zoom as the uh, the virtual way of presenting these to the students. Um, we're not sure exactly how many students we're going to be able to access this based on technology, if Zoom is going to be able to handle all the um, the challenges that comes its way, but we're you know, we're kind of figuring this out together. Uh, from a personal side, um, so I'm going to be working remotely for the foreseeable future. So I, I work full time at a university, but I also teach part time as an adjunct at uh, two other universities, and that's all done remotely. So I really have no reason to leave my house. Uh, I'm not quarantined. I'm not sick. No one in my family is sick. Um, but as of right now, that's kind of where we're at. Um, Kind of what's going on in the world right now is uh, New York and California have been kind of on lockdown as far as, uh, you know, you know the people can't really leave as far as I understand it because uh, there's been a lot of uh, breakouts. There's, I think as of right now, oh, I think there's like 8,000 cases in New York. Um, it's, it's, in, it's in every state. Um, here in North Carolina where I live, um, we've had cases, uh, none of anyone that I know of personally. Uh, they did announce that uh, recently that there was a case found in an in a elderly home. I don't know if it's a assisted living home, I guess is the better way to say that, which is a little heartbreaking because, you know, my mom lives in an assisted living home, not the one in North Carolina. Um, they're not allowed to have any visitors, and, you know, they're supposedly some of those that are the most susceptible to this uh, situation. It's kind of a surreal situation right now. I mean, my wife has been temporarily laid off from her work um, and she's earning un unemployment benefits. Um, again, it's not a huge concern as far as us financially because she just works part time. Um, but she works in the floral business and, you know, there's not weddings and there's not stuff like that going on right now. Everything's really kind of shut down. Um, this whole concept of social distancing of where we need to stay away from everybody just so we don't, you know, we could try to prevent the spread of this disease to the to the best of our ability. Um, so I've got two kids that are home right now, um, and my I've got a third one who will be coming home. She's finishing college remotely, um, and so we'll have five of us here in the house, and really no place to go. <laughs> so our, our our car gas bill will go down <laughs> significantly, um, which will be good. Just wondering how we're going to do some different things and spend some quality time together as a family. Um, I will still be very busy as far as working because I'll be, again, I'm working three jobs and I'll be doing that remotely. Um, but at least I'm in my comfortable chair wearing my pajamas, really, you know, uh, doing that. As far as anything writing, my latest book, which is called National Bestseller, which is really kind of freaky because I wrote this book and it came out in January and I wrote this way before this COVID-19 thing was even on the radar. And it talks, you know, the pr primary element of the book is how um, the media overblows certain situations and how the... Um, the uh, the the general populace responds. In the case of my uh, of the book National Bestseller, um, it's dealing with uh, oil prices. Uh, it was just a you know peak oil 
the fact that we're um, generating more, uh, we're using more oil than we can possibly generate at any given time. Someone had written a book on that, main character had written a book on that, became a national bestseller to the point where the media then started hyping it, everyone started price gouging, and there was a big shortage, and I mean, and, and the effect that it had on everyone's lives. This is the book that I wrote before this whole COVID-19 thing has happened. It's interesting how many things I kind of got right as far as guessing. Um, for example, right now, gas prices are really low because, um, and that's part of the book, a little bit of a spoiler, um, that if people stop driving, then the demand goes down, and so the supply goes up, and so the, you know, supply demand makes it a big thing. But just concepts of, uh, you know, people, actually the very first scene of the book talks about, it's like right before a snow, snow, a snowstorm in North Carolina and how everyone's rushing there to get bread and milk because um, that's just what they do in North Carolina if there's a snowstorm, and how they, they don't have enough, and so they have to ration, and people are getting upset and fighting in the aisles. And we kind of saw this with toilet paper um, here during the COVID thing. Um, also, how fresh fruit stops uh, becoming available because it's, it's, you know, it's because of various reasons. And so, um, and the media, I, I will say, I will say that in my book, I'm a much more critical of the media. I used to work in the media, although the media has been to the point, so are some media sites that have still really run with this and really kind of overhyped this. Um, though a lot of them have been a lot more respectful than I would ex than you know, honestly, I've seen in the past, which is great. Um, what I am seeing is the price gouging with the uh, the toilet paper and the hand sanitizer is a little weird. Um, the uh, the what's what's also unfortunate is that some people are using this time to profiteer, uh, and I have been contacted by so many different companies with my role as an educator saying, ooh, we now know you have to work remotely, and guess what? We have the remote platform for you. Sign up. You know, we'll give you a free trial and whatever. And they're, 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 I understand their, their business model, and it's like, like, hey, look, we have this service, and we're going to give it to you for free for a little bit until you kind of get used to us and, and stuff like that. Um, but it kind of bugs me the way that this is being presented. It's just overblown by um, how many different people are reaching out to me to help me really when it's in their best interest for their business. Um, so that's, that's, that hasn't been sitting very well. On a personal level, try not to, I mean, I've been trying not to freak out about this whole thing. I mean, I'm a huge baseball fan, and so the baseball season has been postponed indefinitely. You know, they say, oh, maybe May or, um, I don't know if it's even going to happen this year. If it is, maybe towards the end of the summer. Um, just weird things like, you know, just like the restaurants are closed down. Uh, I guess you don't like to get takeout now. You can't really go into a restaurant. Um, and, you know, who's to see what's going to happen next? So this is kind of just a snapshot of March 21st. Um, I've been very busy the last few days trying to get everything ramped up for switching over from face-to-face -to, -face to online classes and keeping in touch with all my students, working with them as they're dealing with challenges. It's a very busy time. And uh, you know that something's weird in the world when it's the you know it's the last thing I'm thinking about before I go to bed. It's the first thing that comes to my mind when I wake up, and I'm almost ch scared to check you know uh, the news to see what the latest is. But we are dealing with that right now. The last time I felt anything like this was when I was uh, working in New York, the New York area during 9-11, and I remember thinking, wow, I'm living through history, and uh, I'll, I'll chronicle, I'll, I'll talk about that in a future video, I'm sure, but um, what was weird is that we kind of got back to normal after 9-11, sort of. There was some changes that were made, I mean, as far as uh, flight safety and, you know, as far as what, you know, how to get into the airport, what the, what's allowed, what's not allowed. I expect that after this COVID-19 thing kind of runs its course, We'll probably see a lot more uh, changes as far as just standard practices when it comes to maybe immigration, travel, um, as far as being able to travel overseas and maybe have to have a clean bill of health. I don't know. Uh, you know, more testing that's going to be available and stuff like that. So we'll see how it all plays out. I do think we'll get back to a sense of normalcy at some point in time. I hope so. Um, whatever that means, but there will be some subtle changes. So anyway, those are my thoughts for this particular video, you know. Uh, again, mainly made it for me. If you want to watch it, go for it. If you dislike this, I don't care. <laughs> it's not for you. It's for me. You know, anyway, there you go.